everybody, it's me, Margaret, and I'm in a different location. This is actually my kitchen. And why am I hanging out in the kitchen today? Well, for one reason, Tucker's not here. So usually when he's working, you can hear him talking up there in his office. And it, the voice, his voice just carries down here. And anyway, so I have all the house to myself for the moment so I said well we'll take advantage of it and get a different background and also because I got a brand new kitchen table and I'm so excited about it so I wanted to be here with it it's made with reclaimed wood you can kind of see the knots and stuff in it I really like it all right, so I have a lot to tell you about um, both vlogginess and crochet stuff. I haven't done any knitting stuff. It's all crochet. And first and foremost, I have this big giant blob of yarn right here. <laughs> I can't tell you exactly what it is yet, and I've mentioned it before. And I also have these light brown little pieces with lots of ends to sew in, as somebody so generously pointed out not too long ago on Facebook or uh, Instagram. Very wise and very right. But anyhow, the end result will be revealed soon. But I want to tell you about this yarn, Charisma. A lot of people like Charisma. It's made by Loops and Threads. It's a Michaels brand. It's a bulky white yarn, but it really, really feels good. Now, I ordered this in bulk it was before we moved, actually, because Craftsy had it on sale for at, at least 50% off. It might have been more than that. And you have to watch your prices on Craftsy, too, because sometimes what they go, big sale, it's really not a big sale. But I was pleased with that, and so I bought everything I needed then, and it was like 15 balls, I think, of this. And then you had to put with it a worsted weight. So I ended up getting, let's see, this color is espresso, and so I got coffee of Red Heart Super Saver, which I did not want to use, but I was in one of those situations where I kept forgetting, kept forgetting, kept forgetting, and I was in Walmart one day, well, of course, walking down the yarn aisle just to see what was there, and um, I saw coffee with Red Heart Super Saver, and I said, you know, I'm going to grab that. This is so strange. We've talked about this before. Different brands, like Red Heart Super Saver, for example, feel different in different colors. And I can't figure out that out. It, it's a mystery to me. But I have noticed, for me, this has been my experience, is that brown and gray wash up really well, strangely. So I thought I was banking on that. Now, of course, I haven't washed it to feel it, but it is mixed with this. So it's... It's okay. I'm, I'm so far. I'm, I'm really pleased, and it's so big and bulky and squishy, and I just love it. So I'll, more on that later. Now it has been a while since I have done a regular sheepishly sharing video, and I had to get my calendar out so I could remember what was going on in between there. I had been working on that big brown thing pretty monogamously um, for the most part. I get kind of tired of looking at solid brown. <laughs> and I'll have to put it down and go to something else for a little while. And um, I told you last video that I wanted to do something that was supporting our troops. So I started playing with that. So here's a basic hat. And I was using, this is Red Heart Soft, which is soft. It's very similar to Karen Simply Soft as far as inexpensive acrylics go. And then this camo, is the Deborah Norville, which feels very much like those two that I just mentioned. However, it wasn't a good camo to use for this because you see the camo going on here and then you turn it around on this side and it's just the solid. <laughs> so this, this didn't turn out the way I hoped at all. I think maybe if I put a camo palm on the top that might do the trick. I don't know. I, I'll think about that soon. So I said, got to come up with something better. So I went rooting around in my stash, which, by the way, has been 
pretty much a goal. I haven't stated that goal, but I keep seeing these great yarn sales coming up, and there's going to be more because of the time of the year. But I'm not going to buy any because as far as my um, charity stash goes, I'm great for my acrylics and everything. I have got to use some of that, and I know I've shown you that before, and you could agree with me that I have entirely too much. It's a gluttonous. So anyway, I went searching through my stash and I found some red heart camo and I ended up doing this. Now this is a basic half double crochet hat until you get to this brim. And what I did was half double crochet camel stitch right here to get these horizontal lines. And I really like that. And that was good. Now, somewhere in my head, as I was thinking about honoring the troops, I wanted to have a yellow ribbon. And I do have a little thin yellow ribbon. And I was thinking about just putting a tiny little yellow ribbon in the center of this. And you could wear it like on the side of your head or something. I don't know. I don't want to be in your face about it. I want it to be subtle. And uh, well, that's just kind of how I am about everything. I'm not a bling, bling, bling person. So I'm thinking that that might look good on this hat. I'm not sure yet. But I still was thinking, oh, that hat's really not floating my boat, so I got the Addy out. And here is that Deborah Norville when it's knitted. And you can see uh, it does have long stretches of color. So, so like the whole hat would look really good. So like here's a long stretch of that brown, here's a long stretch of that tan, whatever. And then I made this reversible, so if you wanted to use just all of that. And here you can see the way that works up very well. You can see a lot of the long stretch of the green, dark brown. You can see the long stretches of the tan. So it's pretty yarn, and I think it's really meant to be used by itself because it didn't work out so well when I mixed it in with uh, the green. Then I went back to the Super Saver. Now here's the thing. This camo super saver feels thinner than a regular number four worsted. And this Red Heart Soft, yeah, Red Heart Soft is thinner than your regular worsted. So knowing that, I still did not take into consideration that that often makes a big, giant, long hat. Remember that the types of yarn you use is going to affect your sizing on an adding machine. You can't change the needle size or your gauge on the machine itself. It's all about the yarn and your tension. So anyhow, I ended up with this extra long hat. So when you wear this hat, it looks something like this, kind of like a slouchy. So this is pretty much just reversible. You could use either side, like, you know, have the green band, or you could have the camo band with the green for your mane. And I like that. I really like these double hats, and especially like them when you have a cuff, because the cuff really warms your ears. So anyway, that's what I was thinking with that. I just saw this, and I have no earthly idea what I would use this for, but oh my word, is it soft. It's one strand, it's one string, and it comes off either side. I mean, I'm thinking teddy bears, oh my word. It comes in all kinds of different colors. Now, in my daily life, what was going on was that we were rushing around trying to get Thomas ready for school. He, uh, he had to have a doctor's appointment for regular checkup, you know, all those things you do in the summer before school. And of course, being new here, I had yet to choose a doctor. And we had all this type of commotion that was going on where the doctor's office flooded and had to cancel our appointment. And then they got, a, anyway, a pipe burst in their thing. But anyway, to make a long story short, we got that done. And I had uh, a doctor's appointment for my checkup, too, because it had been a while since I had gone to there. So we get that done. Thomas was going to um, leadership camp uh, a week early before school started and that determines your rank for the coming year. At least you hope to get recognized as a leader. Not everybody does. He was really looking forward to that. 
So when you get to registration, you check in at all these different stations. You have a sheet of paper and everybody has to sign off to make sure that you have seen every station that you need to see. When we get to the volunteer, the parent volunteer station, they say, oh, we don't have a 10th grade coordinator right now, but if you could just, you know, be willing to volunteer, you put your name and number down here uh, and someone will call you and contact you when we have events. Now, I certainly didn't feel qualified to do that because being in Mississippi seven and a half hours away, we would always whisk in, you know, on a Thursday night and pick Thomas up on Friday afternoon and that was it. I didn't really get to hang out at the school and, and know the goings on or whatever. So I said, oh, well, I'll be happy to put my name down as a volunteer. I certainly don't feel qualified to actually be a coordinator, but um, we moved here so that I could be involved in the school, so I'd really like to do that. The next thing you know, dun da da <laughs> I'm not sure how it happened. I think because I said something and I was a warm breathing body, um, I, <laughs> I am now the 10th grade coordinator. And actually that's good because I really do want to get involved. I can meet, I've already met more people and um, I don't know, it's really good. But it, it's been kind of busy these past few days because Lots of emails are going out and um, you have to get your databases all set up and uh, it's been busy with the computer work, but anyway, that happened. So life is going on the way it should and in the evenings I would sit down and trying to use up my stash, I pulled out some of this. Now this is a Red Heart yarn too and I got this on sale a long time ago. It was a massive Joann sale. I think it was 50% off and I had a coupon that allowed me to have an additional 20% or something like that. I don't know. I know where the video is though. I'll try to find it. So when I was rooting around in my stash, I found it. It's called Red Heart Fiesta and I have it in two colors. This uh, harvest color and then a brown color and you can see it has these flecks of other colors in it. Now because it's a busy yarn I knew I needed a very simple pattern because my mind has been spinning lately I knew I needed a very simple pattern and so I just did a basic half double crochet beanie with the front post back post ribbing that uh, is so common in crochet hats. And I do like this. I finished it and looked. I still had a ton of yarn left. So I made a little kid's hat to go with it. So we have a big one and a little one. And then I still had more yarn in there. So I made a little baby hat. And I put a great big fun pom-pom on there. It's almost as big as that baby's head. But <laughs> regardless, I thought that was a cute little family of hats with this yarn. And I still have more yarn. Maybe I should put palms on all of them. It, one skein goes a long way. So that was fun. And this was over a series of uh, several nights, I think. So we're at this big giant antique festival. It happens one weekend every month and we are going to check out and see what we can see. First we hit all the shops that were outside of the main big building and this cast iron booth was so neat. A lot of the pieces were actually around the 1800s or so. I love this little sheep bread mold or whatever kind of mold you want to use it for. This place was huge and believe it or not we didn't buy anything but we had such a good time that we probably will go to it as often as we can and I only have it once a month. Okay here's an old potty. So glad this is not our life anymore. So here's your candle. You put that there. And I suppose it had some sort of flushing system. Oh, can you bring your drink? <laughs> so many creative things in here too. A bar counter that was made from the front of an old car and seating from an old Coca-Cola ice chest. And, and what is this? A spool winder? I don't know. And there were several old slot machines and this was something the owner called a hair quackery. 
You were supposed to hook these wires up to your head and it helps your hair grow. <laughs> Isn't that great? Now, a while back, if you're a longtime viewer, you'll know that my doctor at home had taken me off of sugar, telling me that I was, on my, I was pre diabetic and um, said, You really need to watch your sugar intake, your carbs, follow the glycemic index, you know, watch that and everything. I said, Okay, okay. Well, I did great until the move, and then I just threw everything out the window and did just what I wanted to and did not exercise. and. Anyhow, I'll go back for my test results here at this doctor. I'm one point away from being diabetic because I didn't listen to my doctor. So in addition to that, there were all kinds of other numbers that were all wacko, which was pretty much the case two years ago when I had gone through this extensive testing at home. And so now, now I am gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, peanut-free, and then I have to watch my carbs. So I have to eat the high protein and follow the glycemic index for everything and, and all that. So isn't that fun? So anyway, life goes on, but I ran across this. This is a dog sweater that I crocheted ages ago. Can you see it? Ages ago for my friend's dog out at the farm. and. The little dog wore it for a while and then outgrew it, and so I ended up taking it back so that I could donate it, and of course I didn't donate it. But it has washed up really well, and what this yarn is, it's very, it's real, turned out soft, and it, it, well you can see, it's in great shape, even though it's been washed lots of times, but it's Pound of Love. Let me interrupt your dinghy friend here. This was not Pound of Love. When I looked back in the old video, I saw it was Bernat Baby Yarn, but my mistake led me to rediscover my Pound of Love stash. <laughs> now, back to dinghy Margaret. Lion Brand Pound of Love that you can get on sale, which of course I did. Every bit of this charity yarn that I have up there, I have bought on sale. That Red Heart Super Saver Brown, that coffee, full price at Walmart. I think that's the only thing I've paid full price for in a really long time. And that's not charity, by the way, that big blob of brown. Clarification. I did buy quality yarn at the Cast On Cottage for full price, but as far as my charity yarn goes, the acrylics from the big box stores, those I always buy on sale. But anyhow, I really like this stuff, this pound of love, and I have it in several different colors. And so as I pulled this out of the washer, because I would need to donate it, and I was looking at it thinking, oh, it just washed up so pretty yet again, and I really like this. I have some more. Let me go see what I have. And I had some blue in this that was open already this color. So I, I can't remember the name. I think it's called denim. And I thought, oh, what do I want to make out of that? So I saw this cute little fun hat. You see that? This is a free pattern with these little owls everywhere. And I thought, well, now isn't that cute? And I consider myself well-versed in the art of crochet. I don't know if I'm exactly advanced or not, but I didn't think twice about trying this. I could clearly see, um, especially when you read the pattern, all it was was double crochet, front post double crochet, and a front post triple crochet. Well, my goodness, I know what that is. So I said, okay, I'll do that. So I started this hat. Then we went to church Sunday, and... Um, in Sunday school, I have a habit of uh, contributing <laughs> a lot in Sunday school. I can't help it. I do that wherever I am, actually. I think I get so involved in what I'm learning about or thinking about, and then things just jump out. And of course, I've taught Sunday school in every age bracket and whatever. So at the end of Sunday school, they asked me, would you like to teach? <laughs> now. Keep in mind, I love this Sunday school. Well, there are a lot of retired people in there, and I just feel like there's so many people that know so much more than I do. And so I thought, hmm, I said I would be happy to substitute, you know, because I didn't feel qualified to actually, you know, 
be a regular leader. And the next thing you know, they hand me the leader book and another book for the upcoming section. And we walk out of there and I said to Tucker, how did I end up being a Sunday school teacher and the 10th grade coordinator all in one week? How did this happen? <laughs> but I love that Sunday school and it, it I just, I don't know, it's just been great. It's one of the greatest things that have happened has happened to us since we moved here to Georgia was this church. We're really excited about it. So I'm happy to contribute, and, and that was good. And there's several teachers, so I don't have to do this like every Sunday or anything. So you just take turns, which is really nice. But you can say I'm getting involved in my new home. <laughs> And tomorrow, actually, we have a ladies' lunch um, up in Dahlonega, which is this neat little German town. I'm, I'm really excited to go there. But anyway, that's beside the point. I, back to my little hat. So I begin the process of making the owls on this little hat. And I need to tell you, I'm going to link the pattern for anybody, but I'm going to tell you, if you are a beginner, stay away from this. The pattern is well written. I think, I think the most important thing is that you need to be able to read your crochet. You need to know what a stitch looks like. For example, once I heard someone say on a video that it looked like a seven, you know, like this, a seven. No, it doesn't. It's like a backward seven when you're crocheting because your work is upside down and on the inside. And it's actually, well, at least, I guess you could look at it the other way, but that's not the way I do it. And so I need, you know, you need to be able to read like that to know that this stitch, actually the chain that you go into is a little bit to the side. So once you learn that and you're able to read your stitches because things change and look a little different when you're front posting and then you have to go straight into a regular double crochet in the next stitch. So I'm just saying I, it's not suited for a person who is new to crochet. So anyhow, and, I, and there's no tutorial. There is a crochet tutorial for like an owl washcloth, but you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This is round and round and round and round. So it's different. But anyway, here's how it turned out. Can you see them? I used, what did I use? This to glue on the googly eyes. Now, she used buttons, and that would be the safest thing. Of course, you know, children, I would hesitate. I don't know, you need to know the child. Don't, don't make one for a toddler that could pull off the eyes or the buttons or anything like that. Uh, make it for a child who's old enough to know not to put things in their mouth. Now, I used to have some glue from, this is Aileen's, and I used to have some glue that was called Jewel It, made for putting things like this specifically onto fabric like that. And it was washable and it was great. As a matter of fact, I used to cheat. Thomas's uniform shirts back at home uh, were kind of expensive. So when he outgrew them or they became stained or something like that, I would rip off the patch and I would go buy a cheap white shirt that looked the same because you had to the same kind of buttons and all that. And then because I didn't want to sew it on, I would just glue it on with that jewel it. And it was wonderful glue. Never once did I have the slightest bit of problem with washing it. And I used to wash in bleach and all that kind of stuff because you could imagine what a middle schooler's front white shirt would look like. And that stuff was fantastic. Well, when I was at Michael's needing some more of that stuff, I couldn't find it, but I found this fabric fusion and it claims to be able to do the same thing. So I will test it out and let you know, but I had to put my hat on here because I couldn't get to all the eyes. I hope it's turning out right. Right from here, all I can see are just a bunch of white gaps and it doesn't look right, but does that look better? So anyhow, it came out really cute, but I will tell you, I had to rip out and rip out and rip out 500 times because I was either not paying attention or I just flat misread the instructions or I thought the instructions said 
what my interpretation of the instructions wa was, was not what it actually meant. <laughs> So I'd be going and I'd look at it and go, this is not right. And then I'd have to go back. But then when I'd go back and when I read the instructions very, very carefully to try to figure out what it was I was doing wrong, I don't think I would have written it any other way. I think they're very well written. So if, when you're ready to pay attention, when you have the skills <laughs> to read your own crochet, I would say a medium advanced, uh, somewhere in there, definitely not a beginner. And as usual, I'll put the link to the pattern in the description box below. Now, some of, some of you may be wondering, so Thomas, how did leadership camp go? Because it is over and the first week of classes has begun. And I'm proud to tell you that he did get a promotion. He is a staff sergeant squad leader of his company. He's Charlie Company. So we were super excited and very, we're just absolutely thrilled for him and proud for us. And I don't know why we're proud. We didn't do anything, <laughs> but he earned it. And that is just tremendous. So he's doing great. Now back to using up stash, I had scraps. And so I made a basic striped hat. This is half double crochet. You know something I really like about half double crochet is that it looks good on either side. You know, the way the stitches do. I like, I like either way because this, this kind of makes little lines like, you know, I don't know, front, uh, back loop only type lines, but it's not. And then on this side, which is actually the proper side, you know, you have your basic thing. But these were just scraps, and uh, I just wanted to use that all up because I don't like to be wasteful. I'm sure I'm forgetting something else that I wanted to tell you, but that's all for now because I have kept you long enough. Talk to you next week. Bye.